Okay, so what is our G standing for? Grouping symbols. And as we discussed yesterday, those grouping symbols include all of these things here. Parentheses, brackets, braces, absolute value bars, radical sign, fraction line. And we will be working with a lot of these today as we solve a couple problems. E stands for exponents. This next step is where the most mistakes happen. People get M, D in their head and they think that M has to be first and D has to be second. We multiply and divide, but we do it going from left to right. So if there is a division problem on the left, it gets done first, even though M is first in what we are looking at here. And we also add and subtract in the same way going from left to right. So we are gonna use or of operations to solve a problem together and then you guys are going to have the rest of class to solve two other problems they're pretty long so I want to go through this step by step with you I'm gonna use a pencil because even I make mistakes on these sometimes and I want to make sure I can correct it when we're working with a problem go ahead and fold this in half When we're working on a problem, we are going to follow order of operations. And I'm gonna point out to you, there's a couple of grouping symbols we're gonna start with here. I'm gonna start with this grouping symbol and this grouping symbol. Everything else in the problem that's not being simplified, we just rewrite it until we get to it. So we're gonna start off on the left and you're gonna to wanna to write kind of small because there's a lot of steps to this problem. We're going to start off with negative 2 in parentheses to the fourth power, minus 3 times the absolute value. What is 5 minus 11? So the absolute value is being simplified to negative 6. Plus 2. And then we've got this whole giant mess in this grouping symbol on the right side of the problem. We're going to keep the 2 out in front and put the parentheses. We're going to rewrite the 2 times 7 minus the 4 times the absolute value of what's 2 minus 3. Okay. And then draw the vinculum. Does that help? And underneath it, we have this radical sign, and we're just going to rewrite it as it is for now. We'll get to it as we continue working on the problem. and then end the parentheses. In this next phase of the problem, I'm going to convert this and this from absolute value into their value. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by rewriting that negative 2 to the fourth power, minus 3 times. Notice I'm putting in parentheses instead of the absolute value. This is simplified, so now I can pull it out of the absolute value. What is the absolute value of negative 6? So this is going to be 3 times 6 plus 2 times, we've got that 2 times 7 up there still, minus 4 times absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Negative 3 squared plus 2 times 17. The next section I'm going to work on is going to be a couple of things in here. I'm going to multiply this and multiply this. 
And I'm also going to work on this part of what's inside of that radical sign. So the things in front stay. We still have a grouping symbol, so we can't do the exponent yet. We still have a grouping symbol and an exponent, so we're not even going to multiply this yet. That happens later. Plus the two times. I'm going to start simplifying what's in the numerator in here. What's 2 times 7? And then negative 4 times positive 1? Negative 4 times positive 1. So this becomes, instead of 2 times 7 minus 4 times 1, we get 14 minus 4. And inside the radical, I'm going to do this one first. What is negative 3 squared? Think back to yesterday. It's a negative 9. Because that negative is not captured inside the parentheses. Remember that from yesterday? So we have a negative 9 plus, let's go ahead and do 2 times 17. What's 2 times 17? 34. Okay. That grouping symbol is getting less confusing looking. We're starting to get things simplified. Again, negative 2 to the 4th power, minus 3 times 6, plus 2. And we're going to get inside that grouping symbol. What's 14 minus 4? So our numerator is 10. What is negative 9 plus 34? Twenty-five. So it is the square root of 25. Two more steps and we're going to be done with that giant grouping symbol mess. Keep going with negative 2 to the fourth power, minus 3 times 6, plus 2, 10 over what is the square root of 25? Next up is the exponent, because, oh, I'm wrong. I still have to do this part. What's 10 divided by 5? So we're going to rewrite this whole thing and just change that to a 2. And we're almost done. We can finally do the exponent that we've been writing over and over again, because now this isn't really a grouping symbol. It's just 2 times 2. We're using the parentheses to show it's multiplied but it's simplified inside of there. So we can finally check that g off of our, our list and go to the exponent. Negative two to the fourth power, 16, minus three times six, plus two times two. We can simplify these two now, and I don't need to do them separately. I can do them at the same time. What is negative three times six going to be? What kind of 18? negative 18. And 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. And after all that work, we are down to 16 minus 18 plus 4. Addition subtraction is the last part of order of operations, right? It goes from left to... So we're going to do this part first. What's 16 minus 18? Negative 2 plus 4. And all of that craziness, I want you to make it really clear what your answer is. I usually box mine. People do different things. Okay, so what started off looking like a terrifying, crazy problem with radicals and things you guys may never have worked with before, if we do it step by step, it's really not that bad. You just have to do them in the right order, okay? I'm giving you two more problems inside that you can work on with your neighbor. We have about 15 minutes. I expect these two problems to be done at the beginning of class tomorrow. I will leave my version up front here open, so if you guys want to finish the first problem and come look, you can, and then go work on the second problem. Make sense? All right, let's get some work done.